What's up guys, in this video, we're gonna work on how to solve a system of linear equations algebraically. And we're gonna do that using the substitution as well as the elimination method by working through five examples that I've handpicked to help you along with the process. I hope you enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two um, different cases that we're gonna go over. First one we're gonna go over is substitution. And then the second one we're gonna talk about is elimination. Now, when going through this with substitution, um, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we could solve this. Previously, what we learned how to do was solve this by graphing, where you graph each one of them, find where they intersect, and then that was your solution, right? Now we're going to learn the algebra method to do that. And the first way that we're going to learn is um, substitution. Now, when doing substitution, basically what we want to do is we want to identify a variable that has a coefficient of 1. And fortunately, in this problem that I chose, all of my variables have a coefficient of 1. Right? So this one's pretty simple. Um, however, not always is it going to be the case. Sometimes there will be like 2 here, 3 here, and like a 6 here or something. So therefore, if they had all those numbers in front, those coefficients that were not 1, then you'd want to solve for y. Right? So when substitution, you want to isolate a variable. But fortunately for us in this problem, we already have a variable that's isolated. Correct? We have x is equal to 1 plus y. So therefore, we don't have to do any more math work. We're good. But some of the problems on, your, on there, you are going to have to solve for a variable. All right? And you always want to solve for the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. Now, the next step. If you guys remember, if I had f of x equals x plus 1, and I said, find the value of f of 8, what did we do with that 8? Hey, Giselle? Giselle? I'm just over. Sure. We plugged in for x, right? What they said is, you are. How to evaluate this function for the value of 8? So we plugged 8 in for x. The reason why we could do that is x was equal to 8, or 8 was equal to x. We could substitute one value for the other value, correct? Does that make sense? So in the exact same case, here we have x is not equal to 8, but x is equal to the expression y plus 1. So in substitution, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to substitute in the expression of what x equals into the other equation. Does everybody see what I did? I took what x equaled, which is 1 plus y, and I plugged that in for x. Okay. Now the reason why that's important is now we have an equation with just y. And we can solve an equation with one variable. I don't really need these parentheses, so it's 1 plus 2y equals 1. Solve for y, so I subtract 1 on both sides. 2y equals 0. Divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals 0. So therefore, the coordinate, you know, if you're thinking about the graph, the, the point where these two intersect is at when y equals 0. Now let's figure out the x coordinate, right? Because remember, it's a coordinate point where they intersect. So I can plug 0 in for y. So I have y or 1 plus. 0 equals x. 1 equals x. That means my coordinate point is 1 comma 0. That's where these two lines, if I was to graph them, would intersect. So since they intersect at one point, this would be called an independent, consistent system. Does that make sense? Yes? So, ladies and gentlemen, ah, we need to remember our system solving by elimination, right? So previously we worked on you know, using our substitution. But what I want to do, Jenna, is we're going to maybe follow some steps. And I, what I did is I left these steps up there for if you guys forgot, you can write them down. And we can use them to follow solving our system by using elimination. So to solve using elimination, remember what we're going to do is we're just going to follow some steps. And what we want to do, we can use elimination when we make sure that we have our variables have the exact same coefficients in front of them. They don't have the same coefficient from them. We're going to have to manipulate them. But for this problem, we want to look at which variable has the exact same coefficient, regardless of the sign. So I look at here, and I notice both of my x's both have a 3. I know their signs are different, but they both have a 3, right? So therefore, they have the same, coefficient, the same number as their coefficient. For the y's, those do not have the same coefficient. Ethan, you're going to have to turn your desk so you can look up here. Okay. So therefore, you have 2 and negative 5. Those are not the same. But here, we have the same coefficient. So when you have the same coefficient for your variable, we can use elimination. Now the next thing is, we need to look at what are the signs of those coefficients. If the coefficients are exactly the same, when they're exactly the same, we're going to use elimination of subtraction. 
But when the signs are opposite signs, we're going to use elimination by addition. So if you look at this, I have a positive 3 and a negative 3. All right? So therefore, they're opposite signs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate these equations by adding. Okay? So what you're simply going to do is add the two equations. All right? Do you, have, do you have paper for it? Try it down. So therefore, I have 3x minus or 3x plus a negative 3x is going to provide me 0x. 2y plus negative 5y will provide me a negative 3y. And negative 19 plus positive 25 is going to provide me 6. Okay? Now obviously you guys notice what happens when we add 0 times anything? It goes to 0, right? So what we say is we just eliminated our variable. So now I have a negative 3y equals 6. So ladies and gentlemen, remember what we're talking about systems, right? And I'm saying, hey, find the, find the solution of the system. What that means is right, where our two equations you know, are going to sh you know, share a point. Where they're, um, and we looked at that on the graphs is where the two lines intersected, right? They share a common point. So here, what I do is I now just need to solve for my y. So to solve for y, divide by negative 3 on both sides. Now I get y equals negative 2. So I found the value or the value of the y coordinate of where these two lines intersect is at negative 2. So now I need to find the value of x. So since I know y equals negative 2, I can substitute negative 2 in for the y variable. And it doesn't matter which one you pick to solve for x. I usually don't like to deal with the negative, so I'm going to plug negative 2 in for y into the top equation. So I have 3x plus 2 times negative 2 equals nine, negative 19. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, we just can solve for x. So I have 3x plus, or 3x minus 4 equals negative 19. Yes, question or what? Okay. So you just take your negative 2, plug it in for your y, and then evaluate it. Um, now, just to solve for x, guys, it's just like working a uh, two-step equation. Undo subtraction of 4 by adding 4 to the other side. 3x equals a negative 15. Divide by 3. x equals negative 5. Therefore, I know that y equals negative 2, x equals negative 5 is going to be the solution of your two equations. All right? So therefore, my final answer is going to be 5 comma negative 2 if I wanted to write it as a coordinate point. Right? Remember coordinate point, we're dealing with the graphing, that's where the two lines intersect. So, step number one. We need to identify a variable with a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So you guys remember the coefficient is going to be the value that's being multiplied in front of, uh, multiplied by your variable. So um, basically what we're looking for is a variable that is by itself, because that basically means that it's being multiplied by 1. Or if it was a negative, then it would be multiplied by negative 1. Does everybody follow me? Yes? OK. So you guys can see that x is my variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. All right? Step number two. Solve for that variable using inverse operations. So to solve, I'm just going to kind of make a nice little side note over here so I can make sure I can apply my operations. Now the reason you could really do this for any variable, the reason why I tell you guys is you choose a variable for when it has 1 or negative 1 is because all we have to do to solve for this variable is subtract a 3y. So therefore, x equals negative 3y plus 5. Does everybody see that? Okay. If you were to solve for x here, you'd have to add 4y and then divide by negative 2. You could do it, but do you guys see how, much, how that's more steps? Yes? So I always like to solve for the variable um, that, has one, uh, that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. Now, when I'm talking about the quantity that the variable is equal to, this is what I'm talking about. So step number three it says plug in the quantity, which is in the green, that plug in the quantity, vari that I should have said that, that the variable is equal to 2. So the variable is equal to the green quantity. Does everybody see that? OK. So we're going to plug in the quantity, the, va the variable is equal to, into the other equation for the same variable. So we're saying x is equal to this quantity. 
I'm going to plug in this quantity in for x into the other equation. So the other equation is right here. I am going to replace my variable x with my new quantity. So it's going to look something like this. <coughs> Negative 2 negative th or times negative 3y plus 5 minus 4y equals 5. Does everybody see how I basically just replaced x of my other equation with the quantity that x is equal to? Yes? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we don't really use boxes. In math, when we want to replace something, we use a different mathematical symbol. Yes? Parentheses. Parentheses. So technically, ladies and gentlemen, it should look like this. OK? We don't really, I just used the green box so you guys could like visually see, oh, that goes there. But basically, we're going to want to use parentheses. And the reason why parentheses are going to be helpful is because that also is going to remind us that we have to apply distributive property. Because going to the next step, it says simplify and solve for the other variable. So now we're dealing with an equation that has y. Up to this point, we were talking about x. We solve for x and we plugged x in. Now we're solving for the other variable, which is y. So when I apply distributive property, I get a positive 6y minus 10 minus 4y equals 5. Again, we do not have to use properties of equality when we have like terms on the same side. I can simply just combine 6y and minus negative 4y because they're on the same side of the equation. So therefore, I'd get 2y minus 10 equals 5. And now I can just go ahead and solve. So to have 2y is equal to 15, divide by 2, divide by 2, y equals 15 over 2. Now, I'd like you guys to leave this as a fraction. If you want to convert it to a decimal, if you and on your EOC you have a calculator available, that's great. But if you don't have a calculator available, um, a lot of fraction operations are going to be easier to go ahead and compute the correct answer. Decimals sometimes can uh, get messy. Well, fractions will get messy as well. But anyways. So therefore, we solve for the variable. Now, you're going to plug the value back. So the value that y is equal to is 15 halves. So you're going to plug the value back into the equation for the same variable. Use the equation for the other variable. So you guys can see that over here, I already have x solved. I now know what y is. So I'm going to plug this in for y. So when I do that, I have x equals negative 3 times what y is equal to plus 5. So when you multiply a whole number times a fraction, you rewrite your whole number as a fraction. This becomes a negative 45 over 2 plus 5. To add, um, add a whole number to a fraction, you have to have common denominators. So I'd multiply by 2 over 2. And what I get is x equals negative 45 over 2 plus 10 over 2. That's not the same. And that equals x equals a negative 35 over 2 which you can't simplify. Anybody have any questions? We're dealing with fractions, but that's OK. You could convert them to decimals, but I want to see fractions. So therefore, the intersection point is going to be at x and at y. So a lot of times, if they ask, we can write that as a coordinate point. And it'll look like that. Welcome. So what I'm going to do is now show you and kind of talk to you a little bit about elimination. And what I'd like to go back to into is, remember, when we had a system, I'm just going to make something up. Uh, but when we had a system of equations with two variables, what we wanted to do was try to determine um, how we could isolate one variable. Because if we could isolate one variable and then substitute that into the other equation, what we would do is we would have an equation that was um, we'd have an equation that only had one variable, either the x's or the y's or whatever variables we were dealing with. But we'd have an equation with only one variable that we could then solve for. 
So that's very important when having two equations. We, when we want to solve for them, we need to combine them to get one equation that's only going to have one variable. So substitution, we always wanted to isolate the variable and then plug it into the other equation. However, there's another method that we can do to get us to one equation with one variable. And this is what we call the elimination method. And the elimination method, what we're going to do is rather than substituting one variable, uh, the, what one value of a variable represents into the other equation, what we're now going to do is either subtract the two equations, or I'm sorry, add the two equations, or subtract the two equations. Now, if we were to add or subtract them just as is, what we'd see is I would still have an equation. Let's say I subtract these, negative 2x um, plus negative y equals 3. So if I subtract these, I still don't have an equation. I still have an equation. My resulting equation still has an x and a y. So when we're adding and subtracting, what we have to do is we have to go about this methodically looking at how can we eliminate one of our variables. So sometimes what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by multipliers. So in this case, and I'm not going to solve this whole problem, but what I can do is if I multiply this top equation by 2, I'll get 6x plus 2y equals 8, and then minus 5x plus 2y equals 5. So what I'm saying is, well, now if I rewrite the second equation, I rewrite this as I multiply every term by it. Now when I subtract these two equations, what I'll have is x plus 0y equals 3. And what you'll notice is, this 0y eliminates, and I now have a value of x equals 3. So what I've done is I've eliminated by adding or subtracting, and actually first multiplying by a multiplier, but by adding or subtracting my two equations, I eliminated one of my variables. Therefore, I could solve an equation just with the value of saying x equals 3. Then what I do is define the value of y as I'll plug that into either one of these equations. Substitution, we substitute one equation into the other to get an equation with one variable, one equation. For elimination, we add or subtract the two equations. Sometimes we have to multiply by a multiplier, but we add or subtract our two equations, again, to obtain an equation, one equation with one variable where we can solve. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's just a brief little introduction of elimination. Now let's get on to our examples. Thanks. So again, in this example, I kind of you know, jumped ahead. I wanted to make sure we wanted to isolate the variable. We decided to, we wanted to solve for n, so we had to multiply by our multipliers. And we just determined that the common multiple of um, 6 and 4 was going to be 12. And we want to make 1 negative, so we decided to make the numerator negative. So then we end up with a negative 9m minus 12n equals negative 13, which would be a negative 39. Then I multiply the 2 times everything, which gives me a 10m plus 12n equals negative 38. Yes? It would be positive 39. Thank you very much. So now I go ahead and add them. Does everybody see what I did? Does that make any kind of sense or no sense? So now we simply add them, because what I have now done by using my multipliers, I have now created a system where I have two coefficients that are exactly the same, one positive, one negative. So I can just add them. So that gives me 1m equals 1, because that, goes, that adds to 0n, which is just 0. So m equals 1. Cool, done. Then now I need to figure out what n equals. So again, I just need to plug in the value of m into any one of these equations. It does not matter which one you choose. Because by multiplying these numbers, we produced equivalent equations. So it doesn't matter. Um, I'll use my first equation, because that seems not that bad. So I'll do 3 times 1 plus 4n equals negative 13. 3 plus 4n equals negative 13. Subtract 3, subtract 3. 4n equals negative 16, divide by 4, divide by 4, n equals negative 4. And that's it.